Can you not? Or can you not not? If neckwear is not your niche, but you want to know more, then you're in the right place. We're Happy Gentlemen, and in this video we'll give you a quick rundown of the history of men's neckwear, how it became considered formal attire, and how to style them like a professional. Neckwear has been a significant part of men's fashion for centuries all across the globe. Sometimes for fashion, such as with the ancient Egyptian pharaohs and noblemen who wore decorative neck clothes as a symbol of their status. In other cases, the neckwear had a more practical use. For example, Chinese warriors in the Qin dynasty would use neckcloths for protection and warmth, and in warmer climates, Roman soldiers used neckcloths for protection and to wipe away sweat. The Roman focalium, as it was known, is considered the precursor to the modern necktie, having later influenced the development of neckwear in other parts of Europe. To not ruffle any feathers, We'll skip past most of the neckwear used in the 16th and 17th century, but we'll take a quick look at the Croatian soldiers who served in the Thirty Years' War in the 17th century, and most importantly, wore a scarf called the cravat as part of their uniform. The cravat gained popularity amongst European aristocracy in the 18th century. This white linen or muslin neck piece was often worn with a standing collar and was worn in various styles, such as the Steinkirk a loosely tied, dishevelled cravat, or the stock, a stiffened and folded cravat. The name tie and the roots of various modern stylings can be accredited to an early 19th century satirical pamphlet known as Necklothitania or Titania, discussing many of the common styles of the time. By the 1820s, it was already common fashion for men to wear a black cravat, though brighter colours were worn at home or for leisure activities, and white cravats were worn at the highest formality events. And 200 years down the line, it still stands, with coloured ties being semi-formal, black ties being formal, and white ties being the highest formality, reserved only for those very classy events. From the luxurious narrow ties of the 1920s and skinny ties of the 60s rock and rollers, to the wider and bolder ties of the 50s, and the colours of the 80s and the 20th century was a very formative and experimental period for the modern tie culminating in a wide range of styles, intricate patterns and material selections we see today. Though our modern ties derive from a place of practicality, morphing into fashion, many of the traditions of neckwear culture still remain. Ties, due to their history, have become ingrained in cultural norms, traditions and social expectations, especially as formal attire. Wearing a tie to formal events signifies respect for customs and etiquette. However, outside of formality, throughout history, ties have been worn as symbols of status and authority, and as such are often associated with formal occasions, business attire and business professional settings. But dress codes aside, in a professional setting where you require people's attention, such as an interview, public speaking event, presentation, or even just a meeting, wearing a tie can not only give a sense of professionalism and formality, lending weight to the matter you're talking on, but can also serve as an attention-grabbing element. It draws the eye upward and directs focus towards the wearer's face, which is why the right choice of tie and the right choice of knot is very important. Knots and types of neckwear. There are so many different kinds of knots and it's easy to get tied up when starting out. So what we generally recommend is to learn four foundational knots. The four in hand knot, the Shelby knot, or the Pratt knot, the half Windsor, and the bow tie. The four in hand and the Shelby are easy to learn and a great place to start because they're suitable for most occasions and daily wear. The half Windsor should be the next one you add to your repertoire as it is better for more formal occasions. And finally, the bow tie, for those just-in-case events. Not only is it a very impressive party trick if you can actually tie one, but can also bring a unique elegance to your outfit. Because just like with actual ties, there are a variety of knots to choose from. After you've got these down to pat, then you can start experimenting with more intricate decorative knots. If you'd like a more in-depth video on how to tie a variety of knots, and which occasions they work best for, then just drop us a comment below and uh, 
we'll get on it. When it comes to neckwear, there aren't just different materials, colours or knots that make them distinct. There are different cuts of fabric that define them. The tie, or the necktie as it's most formally known, are the most common and versatile type of neckwear. They are long strips of fabric that are tied around the neck, usually with a knot, and hang down the front of the shirt. Bow ties are a formal type of tie, characterised by their distinct bow-shaped knot. You can have a pre-tied one that is fastened around the collar using an adjustable band, or a self-tie one. Self-tie or freestyle bow ties are a long strip of fabric with two symmetrical bat wing shapes at either end and are fastened around the collar, resulting in their distinct bow shape. Cravats, though, sometimes used to refer to as a wide range of neckwear, are commonly associated with more traditional or vintage styles in modern times. They can be any type of cloth worn loosely around the neck, though they're often wider, draped neckcloths, showing intricate patterns or designs. An ascot is a more formal type of cravat. They're very similar to a standard necktie, but much wider and are usually made of silk or silk-like fabric, giving it a more relaxed and elegant appearance. Ascots are worn looped loosely around the neck, with the ends tucked into the shirt or secured with a pin. You can accessorise most neckwear with practicality in mind by using a cravat pin or tie bar. Cravat pins are decorative pins that pierce through the cravat or tie and attach to the shirt, and tie bars are metal clips that hold the tie in place by fastening it to the shirt packet. Both have practical uses, but there's no reason you can't enhance the appearance of plain neckwear with a decorative pin or bar. Bolo or bootlace ties consist of a cord or braided leather string with decorative metal tips, usually featuring in a decorative slide or clasp in the center. They're a unique type of neckwear that originated in the American Southwest in the early 20th century, having been inspired by how men from Native American tribes such as Zunai, Hopai and Navajo would commonly secure bandanas around their necks with string or a metal clasp. As such, they are associated with Western or cowboy-inspired fashion and are often worn in more casual or informal settings. However, as shown by a host of celebrities, from Brian May to Nick Jonas, with the right suit and event, a standout bolo can elevate an outfit in a unique way. While scarves are not strictly neckwear for men, they can be worn around the neck for both fashion and functional purposes. Functionality being at the forefront of scarf's evolution, it hasn't changed all too much from the style worn in the Qin Dynasty in 221 BC China. Though with modern scarves coming in various lengths, materials and styles, including silk, cashmere, wool or knitted fabrics, it not only provides warmth but style and can be worn in both formal and casual settings. Though the true tenor of ties hasn't changed much, you should know the long and short end of the history and differences between various types of neckwear. Which one's your favourite? The cravat, a bow tie, the ascot? You know, I'm not sure myself. I think I'll have to say it's a tie. Thank you for watching. If you liked any of the neckwear shown in the video, you can check out the description box for more details and links. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more men's suit tips and updates. There's plenty of options on the Happy Gentleman site. But for now, that's all. See you next time.